podcast with me, Ben. And me, Lucy. I'm back. You're back. Uh, Adam is, uh, again, not here this week. It's been three weeks since me and Adam have actually been on a call together. Um, hopefully Adam will be joining us back next week. But in the meantime, we are again returned. And we are again returned. We are again joined by the amazing Lucy Gessart. Hey, Lucy, you right? Oh, thank you, Ben. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm this fine right. frosty morning. Well, I'm feeling very festive now. We've had we've had snow, all our decorations are up. Um, it, it's the countdown to Christmas. I've got my Christmas mug out, which is always like the sign of Christmas. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm feeling really good. I'm really, um, I'm really envious of your Christmas mug. It puts my crappy plain one to shame. I love it. <laughs> I'm I'm very very happy with my Christmas mug. Um, how, how are you feeling? Some festive now? Is the festive spirit arrived? Yeah, I mean, I think the snow last night put me in more of a festive mood. And I've got my little candy canes for putting on my present at the ready, so all is oh, good. I love them. You showed me them earlier. They're amazing. <laughs> so cool. Um, so I think we should just dive straight into this week. This week, we're going to be a bit more freeform. We don't have a guest this week, so you you lovely people are just going to have to listen to me and Lucy talking for ages, which I don't think is a problem with us, because last week we managed to fill an hour and 20 odd minutes. We managed to really fill loads of time so um this week we'll, we'll hopefully just fill about an hour but yeah i think we should start this week lucy with um some sort of q a questions have you got some over there i do indeed have some i mean i want to know what your pre-theater ritual is ben My pre-theater so everyone... ritual because hmm, i think everyone has their whether it be for rehearsals or show week I think everyone has their little rehearsal little ritual that they go through before the big event so walk me through what you would go through on show week before going on the stage so on show week before for me it starts normally like at four or five o'clock so I come home from school come home from college or wherever I'm at come home and I just spend like a good half an hour like detoxing have a nice long shower feel ready um just get some time feeling like I can do it because most of the time with me I get incredible I get so nervous before I do a show um it really affects me I used to have stage fright and you, I don't think anyone would know that from the fact really? that I'm now doing it I used to be terrified of a stage I hated it when I was so about like year six and I did a show and I loved it and it sort of stemmed from there but um I still get really stressed out on a show week so I will take a nice long detox every day I'll like I'm not the most organised person in the world, but I am when it comes to theatre. So I will make sure that my show bag is is packed and ready and by the door and it's all set before I go and I'll check everything, I'll check everything again. And on on so on the way to the theatre, driving over, I will have a panic thing if I'm doing a show with songs. I will just panic thing all of my stuff, all of my, <laughs> um, uh, all, my all my ensemble work, all of my, when I've been, uh, any solos I've had, I've just been, just sing through it, sing through it, sing through it. Uh, and that no is normally enough for my vocal warmer. That's like, gets my voice ready. I'm ready to go. And then when I get to the theatre, I just, normally with me when I get to a theatre, because I'm so stressed about going on set and doing the show, I will try and get myself involved in doing some backstage work normally. So I will <laughs> normally just walk into the theatre and all the cast will be in the green room or getting ready. And I'm just sort of going, uh, look, you, can I help do some set work or something? <laughs> and just like <laughs> helping out, get ready for the show, because I find that doing something like that helps me feel less stressed because I'm doing something else. Um, I'm not just sort of sat around waiting. Yeah, plus it's always nice to give like the backstage people a hand as well because oh, I, yeah. I think it's so stressful. They've already got enough on. So if you can sort of help just sort of get, you know, especially if it's your own props, get your own props out ready. Don't put, let leave them to it. Just get yeah. your props out set and ready so it's all set to go. I think that's... <laughs> that's a bit easier. Yeah. Um, that is, I, that's why I always like to try to help out with that and... Um, sometimes I get in the way, but sometimes I don't, so it's all good. <laughs> um, I think it one show in particular. Um, but then from there, I mean, it depends what, what company I'm working with. Some companies that I work with will do a full vocal and physical warm up, and I'll be ready and prepared, and we'll all be nice and warmed up, and we'll, then we'll do the show. 
so yeah, some some people will do full physical vocal warm. I'm not sure if you've ever had to do one of those massive sort of uh, big group physical vocal warm. Oh yeah, things. every every time I did a show, they sort of as soon as everyone was there, they'd do the whole safety talk and they'd be like, right, get on stage, let's mm. do your vocal warm up, and then you'd all grab your mic pack and get ready. So yeah, we always did the big warm up beforehand. Oh, I just I always find found those really awkward for some reason. I'm just like, oh, hi everybody, let's sing some random notes um but I think that comes from the fact that I don't I I never had to do that when I was doing other shows other shows I did we just didn't do that it wasn't a thing Um, sorry Karam see I always enjoy it I always enjoy it because I kind of think if you're just left to your own devices and you're stressing and getting ready you might sort of neglect doing that but it's such Mm. an important thing for doing so I I really like it when somebody goes because it just takes the stress off you it's just like great I'm just doing it with everyone (laughs) yeah I suppose I I think I need to get used to doing them more often and uh, looking silly with my voice is something I need to get used to um (laughs) and then I mean from there it's just uh I also the other thing I like to do I get my costume on normally really early really oh really early See, my friends always found it hilarious because the way I get ready for a show is pretty much how I get ready for a night out. I sit in my bra and pants, maybe my tights, for as long as possible because I kind of find if I'm stressing before, I don't want to, well, one, I don't want the risk of like my makeup falling on my costume. I prefer just to sort of sit get my makeup on and then put my costume on and not worry about knocking any powder or anything on it. But also I kind of feel like if I've got the clothes, it's sort of restraining me a bit. And it's like, oh, I don't want, you know what I mean? I don't want to sort of get all sweated in my clothes. I'd rather just sit there. But my friend found it hilarious because she's like, you literally, she's like, everyone else is dressed and you're just straight around in your <laughs> <laughs> pants. And just, oh, God. I, just I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's from years because at uni I did like um well I did like pole dancing at uni and sort of like you just get so used to just being like in a sports bra and shorts I think I've just got to that point I mean to be fair though I think I've always been at that point (laughs) (laughs) oh that's great (laughs) no I I just I have I have to get into it straight away I think as well if I'm doing a character like a big while well, I've done a play where I've been leading as a character I find that putting the costume on is what gets the character for me I, I often find in early rehearsals I haven't got it at all and it's until I get the costume that I'm like oh no I now understand how this character feels yeah. because I, they have to move in that specific costume how they mm-hmm. adapt to it so I will put it on a method then kind of I'll put it on really early and especially if I was doing a show where I because I also I normally get to the theatre really really early mm. I rock up at like five o'clock and I'm just sort of sat there for hours uh, quite often I will rock up really really early and then even like four o'clock sometimes and then get my get food delivered to the theatre sit and eat it and then get ready I like to be in the theatre for as long as possible because I like to know that I'm I'm there and I'm ready because I really mm-hmm. stress when I'm not ready on time so I'm always in costume straight away uh, walking around the theatre in that character if that makes sense just getting into the mindset mm-hmm. which sounds really pretentious I know but <laughs> <laughs> no I like it I like it that's a good I think quite a few people kind of have that sort of ritual of sort of getting into their costume to get in the zone of things mm. I think I just I just don't I think I, I don't, I've never really got sort of stressed about things to be honest so I'm just pretty sort of chill when I get there <laughs> It's I'm, quite apparent my attitude is sitting, <laughs> sitting there just taking my time. I'm just trying to think what you did on the on the last show we worked together on, on the corner cabin. Were you, oh, were, on that, well, that one didn't really require a costume change, so I was pretty no. much just in my costume on arrival. I think the only thing I did there was I just took myself to a corner, scattered my makeup around me in like a little orbit. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember then just went through stuffing uh, snacks yeah. down. <laughs> the the thing with that show is because um a couple of us had really heavy heavy makeup on, so I had you you saw the the um the wounds that I had um plastered oh, onto my face. Mm-hmm. Amazing makeup for that show. Um, and 
for that, I was having to get in because I was also doing sound and I was um, ADing the, the the whole show. I was getting to makeup at like five o'clock, four o'clock, and getting into the makeup <laughs> into costume because when I'd had other stuff to do, I had to get everything else for the show ready. Really. Also, front of housing it as well, so I had everything on that show to do pre-show. Um, so that was that was a less normal ritual because I was getting to theatre at. I normally get into the theatre at four for that one and I'd be setting up from four because I mean you know that every night we had to build a set again oh yeah yeah that we was had... finding the set away and put it all back on again yeah. which again it's so good if you've got the actors there to sort of help because they yeah. they know where everything needs yeah. to go they know where they're going to need all the little bits and things it just helps out yeah we, we had some class on that show I remember who, who were always there weren't they they were bringing bringing set and stuff with them and it was just brilliant that was just a nice spirit on that show that everyone was like right we've got an hour and a half to build the entire set again we had to do that twice uh, in the in the in the run because the theater needed it out in the, mm. <laughs> for the day so um that 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 was quite stressful i remember pre-show and pre-show went like that it just went there was like no time no, it flew by didn't it but on, i find out on most shows that i get there at four o'clock and i'll sit and i'll eat my dinner and i'll get ready and do x y and z and then it's immediately time to start the show just suddenly out of the blue i'm like oh it's it's seven o'clock it's half seven right on we go um <laughs> now you've walked me through your ritual ben mm. walk me through what's in your theater bag What's in my theatre bag? You've got your costume. What is in my theatre bag? What's in my theatre bag? Well, because I, I think now I do quite a lot of backstage stuff. I have normally a load of random stuff in there. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm like. You know how disorganised I am. So, but my theatre bag, I like to keep it nice and organised. And normally, I always have weirdly a set of batteries. Always. About... I mean, that actually really handy. The batteries. Because you never know what's going to go wrong. To go out. Yeah, always got um, a screwdriver and or a little set of little screwdrivers and some screws. <laughs> always, <laughs> so I know that, I, in case I can do it wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Uh, mostly because of my my stage management time when I'm stay, when I'm SMing a show, I just have the same bag for all theatres. So I have everything mm. in the bag. I will have um, like twenty rolls of LX, all, all the different colours of LX tape you can imagine to mm. sort of mark out everything all the time. And then it it gets a bit weird. For some reason, I, I was I in preparation for this. I went into my theatre bag. I've got a set of your playing cards for some reason. My I, playing cards. Yeah, a set of yours. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh god, it's because I bought like two with me because people kept moving them. So I was like, I'm going to bring two. So I don't know how it ended up in. But why have I got it? Yeah, I, I wasn't in the show for that. I was in the show for two minutes when I was backstage because I was working. Why? Why do I have your your things in my bag? I, I don't mean, understand. Well, which playing cards are the other though? Because I did win a pack once at an Anne Summers party, so I hope it's not a pack. It's not. Them. It's not them. No, <laughs> it's, it's like a nice blue tin. Oh it's my! Like I, d I don't know where they are now, but I found them in my theatre bag. Like, oh. I'm pretty sure these are Lucy's. But well, I'm not going to begrudge you a pack of cards, Ben. I I'll, mean, I'll, have to, I'll have to sort of I'll post them over to you. <laughs> sort of just throw them I across. Mean, I mean, to be fair, I was looking for a pack of cards the other day because I wanted to play <gasps> solitaire like <laughs> the sad sack that I am. Why, why would you not just, just, just go on the internet? It's, it's versions on the internet, Lucy. Electronic <laughs> things exist. What if what if I want to place aggressive like Irish snap or anything like that? I, mean, I, like, I don't know what that is. That, that that scares me. <laughs> I'm sure one day you'll teach me. Um, but yeah, I have just have and I have all my other stuff. So I always have the most snacks I can possibly imagine. Yes. Uh, I, I'm I'm the, like the snack bringer on shows. So if you work with me on the show, you know that I will bring the food. Um, my uh, A level team. My level class, they know that I, I just bring the food to all our shows and rehearsals. I'm just like, they oh, are the best baked goods, just bringing all that stuff. Because, but then mostly, <laughs> so I can sit and eat it myself. Um, <laughs> so that's what I do. And then about a hundred pints of water, which I won't drink, and I'll leave somewhere in a the theatre and forget about it. Just scattered about. Yeah, well, just genuinely, I will get to an end of a show week, and I'll be like ten water bottles in random points around the theatre in places I didn't even know I'd been. I was like, yep, they're all mine because I drink them 
put them down and then just forget where they are. Mm. So I, I took out my theatre bag the other day, just full of empty bottles. I was like, great. Brilliant. Uh, see, I, I, always think, I always think massive water bottle is a key thing. But yeah, mm. I, think, I think the batteries, that is definitely a handy one. I always, the things I always stock up on for show week are, I always go nuts with hairpins. So I'll buy just a pack of hairpins. I can guarantee I will have about 50. And by the end of the week, I'll probably have like three just in my bag somewhere. You won't ever have like your full pack that you started with. Same with hair bobbles, because like maybe not for yourself, but certainly for people like me or a lot of the ladies with longer hair, somebody is going to need a spare hair bobble. So I think it's always good just to sort of prepare in case other people need something yeah. Safety pins. I always bring yeah, safety I, pins. Always. I've forgotten about that. I've got a little tin. Yeah. Not pins and safety pins, just yeah. in case. I always bring like a basic sewing kit. So just like a few bits of sort of thread with like white or black and a couple of like, yeah, because you never know when somebody's going to have a costume malfunction. No, I'm just thinking of the amount of things that have broken on co- on um, show week and I just sort of had to go on with bits of costume missing. I just need you there. She's going to stitch me up. <laughs> I am a proper prepper. So I always... Wow. Just know, you've learned from experience. So I'll even bring things like tweezers in case somebody gets like a splinter off something (laughs) random. I just want to, I'm just like somebody's like mother, just there like going, oh, let me sort this for you. But the general sort of things on top of sort of the, the emergency kind of things in case something goes wrong, I tend to just sort of bring like, I mean, makeup wise, I'll always bring like a good foundation with me. So good coverage, not like a cheap one. But then uh, it's weird. I won't won't cheap out on the foundation I use. I'd use a decent coverage one that I'd use in the day. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're going to be wearing. You want something that's not going to irritate your skin and you know it's going to work against like sweating and lights, all that kind of thing. But I'll cheap out on things like, because I don't really use like bronzer and if I use like a rouge it tends to be like a cream base so I'll just get like a pressed powder cheap one that you don't care if it gets knocked around you can just shove it in your bag and then whip it on and to be honest they kind of tend to be the kind of darker colours anyway that work better under stage lights like I'd never use my normal stuff because I'd just look pale (laughs) I'd look pale (laughs) and just oh makeup wise as well crazy colours, the amount of sort of crazy coloured eyeshadows and things that I've amassed over the years, purely just for shows. And then I'll bring, I'm a super prepper, I'll bring like four different lipstick colours. I won't just sort of bring one and go, I'll be like, what if I want to change it up? What if I need a different colour for this? I'll bring every, I'll bring every colour I can think of from like neutral all the way up to like crazy purple. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the makeup that I've... I don't ever take makeup to a show. I don't have any. But even though I, I, I need a basic foundation normally to, and a bit of um, mm. uh, bronzer and things to keep to make me not look dead when I'm on stage, all the shows that I've done, pretty much, other than well, shows that I've needed makeup for have all been done for me. Um, oh. all, all the shows that I've worked on, we've had a makeup uh, artist doing the stuff for us. Really? Um, yeah, all like oh. smaller cast stuff. We've had full with we a team, uh, especially Panto. We always had a makeup team for Panto. Wow, I am jealous. I would absolutely love it if somebody did my makeup. So much fun. I mean, I there. I never got anything exciting because I was always just the prince's friend, or I was always that character. I never got to do anything fun or exciting with my with my makeup or any or even my hair. I always had my own hair. Never got any See, wigs. We- we always used to do the boys' makeup, so I used to always bring like a, I'd bring like my eyeliner pen, but I also used to bring a spare one in case somebody needed like beauty marks or sort of like a bit of extra yeah. eyeliner and things on. So we always we always just used to just tell the boys just to sort of wait outside the door and then we'd just <laughs> prep them before going on. That's, yeah, that's what I do. I, and if I do not have, do have any from doing a show where I need to have, so I just nick somebody else's normally. <laughs> I'll just befriend somebody, be like, yeah, can I borrow all your makeup, please? Or can you just do it for, I don't know what I'm doing with that, I don't understand it. 
I just get someone yeah, to do it for me normally, which is really not good. I need to learn, but. Yeah. I mean, I loved it when you yeah. when you did some drag for us one night and you did yours for that read through we did. That oh really yeah, <laughs> thanks thank for, thank, thank for spilling my secrets to the world. Oh, what, yeah. what what did you try and remove it with then? <laughs> oh shush. <laughs> I think I had like kitchen roll and soap to try kitchen... and get it like liquid soap. Kitchen roll and soap. I remember texting you because my eyes had all like. Yeah gone he weird me, like my eyes are sore and he showed me this picture and his eyes were so red and swollen he could barely see it i was like ben <laughs> what on earth have you done i was like did you just react badly and he went i, I tried removing it. i was like what did you remove it with and he was like just just soap and kitchen roll i was like so no makeup remover just scrubbing it off with like <laughs> and okay. I, no it wasn't even soap ben it was like your eco-friendly washing up liquid. Oh, yes, it was. Washing up liquid. Oh, oh God, I remember. Through grease and makeup. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, so I that, know it was that. I remember now. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that I, is I, another thing I bring with me. Baby wipes or okay, actual I, makeup remover. I, have, I think that needs to be something on your list, Ben. No, I have actual makeup remover. Um, and I have all like the little like cotton pads and things, but there was just so much. I had wore so much makeup for that read through that I was getting on the first, which is like three different pantos, and I was the dame each time. And if this was the second or third time, because the first time I'd used a makeup, remover, I got through half a bottle of this sort of this um, special spray stuff that gets rid of it, and I just used it all up. So I ended up just going right, <laughs> yep, yeah, washing up liquid in the kitchen roll, and it oh. didn't do well. Uh, it no. really, it made my eyes just, oh god, not end well. No, no. What, you, what you need to do is Ben, you literally hold it for a few seconds on the area and then wipe. Don't just really nearly start going at it because you're just going to waste all the makeup removal. <laughs> I'm now learning all these secrets. And learning how to do it. <laughs> learning all these tips well you know, I mean you, you learn from experience really don't you but oh, I'll yeah. tell you what else I always bring with me mm -hmm. rote lozenges yes oh kit. that's such a good idea and, yes. and Vic, I remember mm -hmm. I remember one panto I had the worst cold so I tend to bring sort of like lensip honey you know, anything that will keep your throat nice and warm. But I remember for this particular show, I had the worst cold. And this was when I was, um, you know, playing Jack. So I was on a lot. And this costume had so many pockets. I had Vic hidden in one pocket, throat lozenges in the other. I was just, every time I was coming off, just popping one of these and putting the Vicks on. And by the end of it, my voice was like this. I couldn't oh, even, I was God. just, I was, on by the final night, by the final song, I was just miming or just singing through like this. It was, it was awful. But yeah, like, and, you know, normally though, on a normal show, it's just good just to have those, just to keep everything mm. nice and loose. But yeah, that one, I was bringing so many, so many things with me. I even had a pot of Manuka honey. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but yeah, yeah i always think even like ginger as well i think sort of yes. anything with ginger and lemon in is always a good go-to for sort of just avoid the dairy i mean i yeah. love chocolate but on show week i tend to avoid that like the plague and i tend to bring more like um you know like um haribo the sour ones i always mm. think sour or gummy sweets like wine gums are such a good like way of just sort of you know something a sweet treat but mm. i also think it does help your throat a little bit as well but if you, it, the best thing i i found if you have a sore throat on show week if you go to your nearest prep everywhere's got a prep and they just have like little ginger shots just shots Ooh. of ginger, um, like juice. Um, I would like a pure, it's really, but it's just pure ginger and it's really strong, but it just, Ooh. and you just down it and it just completely clears out your entire throat and all your sinuses are just cleared and you're ready to do it. So if I've ever had a bit of a bug and on show week, I'd pop out to, to Pratt. But that, and that's not actually really been a, happened to me because I've not done a, a big, big musical 
properly really um yet too much um but obviously our last one in Oklahoma my first big one was cancelled so I haven't really had that, that experience of needing to do my own makeup to um to have all that stuff and mostly the big shows I've worked on I've been I've been stage manager so I've had all my my practical stuff like my toolkit and mm-hmm. things like that well, maybe you should take this time in quarantine to actually sort of brush up on some of these kind of skills in preparation for when we do go back. Mm, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so um, I mentioned my pre-show ritual. Uh, I don't think you mentioned yours. What What do you tend to do before a show? I mean, you told us that you don't get into your costume straight away, which I think is just wrong, and you're just wrong for doing it. <laughs> but anyway... Um, because I think you just stress out everybody who works on the show, personally. Just going to put it out there. I think you just stress everybody out. It's all your fault, Lucy. Uh, I know. Or that's or just mentally scar them, one of the two. <laughs> I mean, mine, mine is not as, as luxurious as yours. So now that I'm working, I've started sort of on some of the bigger nights, taking it off, or even just for the main week, just taking it off now because... Like it's it's just so stressful. I, my last place of work was literally just round the corner from the theatre. So you could just sort of finish work, wander in, grab some food on the way. And now that I'm sort of working a bit further from where sort of my usual theatres I'd be going in are, and just traffic in general is just a lot worse in this city that we you know in Nottingham it's just a lot worse so I tend to just take it off because I found it was so stressful sort of trying to travel over there and then sort of get ready and again that's just adding to why I sort of delay putting on the costume as long as possible because you're just sort of so sort of stressed so I tend to I tend to sort of like I'll get my earphones in because I tend to just sort of take the bus or if I'm in my car I'll just sort of play some of the songs that I know we're going to be doing, have a little sing along just to sort of get me like hyped for it really, because obviously you've been working all day, you've been stressed, you're sort of like a little bit tired maybe. So I tend to sort of just get myself a little bit hyped up. So get some sort of music on from the show, get yourself a bit more prepared and ready. And then just same as you really, I always liked going in and sort of, helping out some of like the backstage stuff so just sort of rather than because putting on makeup doesn't take me that long I'd rather do something a bit productive so I tend to sort of like getting a few bits sorted helping where they need it so if they want anything moving or putting up help with that and then yeah just sort of I like to sort of chill for a few minutes when I get in as well so I tend to sort of just pick my little area sit and just relax for a minute before I start sort of mingling properly and things because I think it's always good just to sort of if you have had a stressful day before a show just to take a minute just to sort of you know have you you have just your little time just to sort of like relax and sort of get yourself in the mood for it because nobody wants somebody unenthusiastic going on <laughs> no no and I And I kind of think that's, you know, I think like a lot of people who, because Andram, you're doing it for the fun. I think that's really important for sort of people who are sort of working a full time job and doing shows just to sort of take that time to sort of relax, because not everybody has the luxury of sort of being able to sort of, you know, go home eat a decent meal and things like I would literally just grab whatever I could if there was a coffee shop open if there was a subway I'd just grab it and just stuff it on my in my face on the way down which is not great I mean there was I remember like one woman though I absolutely loved it It was hilarious she used to always just get chicken nuggets every show she'd just grab like one of those boxes of like 10 or even sometimes 20 and she'd just sit there oh she just she just subsided off nuggets during theater week Why? Um, she just loved like mcdonald's nuggets and we had a mcdonald's like up the road from the theater so she'd just grab one of these boxes and just work her way through and i think one show weekend she'd got through about 60 nuggets <laughs> at the end of like the run through it was like quite quite a feat I think I think that's quite admirable getting through that many nuggets yeah absolutely <laughs> just how I don't, I don't know how you could do that <laughs> oh, it's great it's good Brilliant. fun 
But yeah, I just think it's always good just to sort of get yourself hyped beforehand and just take the time, just take the time to sort of just relax and get into the zone of it. I always think that's my, and yeah, sitting in my bra and pants and tights for as long as possible. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I don't even come out of it at the end of it. I remember one dress rehearsal, in fact, my first date with my now boyfriend, we were doing a dress rehearsal and I was running late for the day, had no time. So I literally left on all my crazy makeup, left on my like knee high boots and weird flesh colored fish tights. And I just stuck on like a dress and just went, God knows what he thought when I rocked up to that day. <laughs> 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 Wherever he thought this is wow. what he's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, fun times. But yeah, I just, yeah, I love like the pre sort of ritual for going on. I just think it just gets, everyone's always buzzing. It just really gets you sort of hyped up for it. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's really, really good. But yeah, tell me about though, Ben. I mean, we've gone through sort of pre-ritual and sort of what's in your bag. What's, now that you've got onto the stage, what have been your most memorable moments? Memorable moments on stage. Uh, hmm. I think, uh, is it memorable in a good way or a bad way? I mean, both. If you've got like your I most mean, memorable positive, your most memorable sort of maybe <laughs> less positive moment. I'm, I'm just thinking that one of the one of the earliest shows I did, and I um, it was I was uh, just chucked on basically chucked on stage and told we've been working on it for months and months and months, but I've been cast in the lead role of uh, the musical Bugsy Malone playing nice. Bugsy, and I had no stage confidence whatsoever. I was just sort of told by everyone, "Go on, do it, you'll be fine." And I did, and I went on and did it, and everyone thought I was good. I don't know if I was or not, but I loved our time away from that show. There was one point, uh, it was a weird scene where uh, the character of Bugsy, he just seems to like, he faints or like faints, like falls over at everything somebody says. So there's loads of comments happening and he just keeps falling over at different points. Very mm. slapstick routine. I do remember I had this, um, it's a bit of a fear to fail this, but it, it's very memorable. <laughs> and um, it was the first show I'd had to contend with a mic pack. I hadn't had to deal with one because this was quite a long time ago. So I hadn't never had to deal with a with a full mic setup mm. before. And the mic was quite ill-fitting. So first of all, it wasn't fitting around my ears and it wasn't fitting to my face. So I was always having to sort of hold it in place um, quite a bit because it just kept falling off. And this particular scene where I had to keep falling on the floor, I fell, I just I just jumped on the floor, like body slammed this floor really hard. <laughs> I ended up, end of show week, I had bruises all down the side of one side of my body because I was just oh, going yeah. for it. And it was before I like was trained in how to fall properly. So I just fell over. And um, I fell so hard. And I fell onto my mic pack one night and it just smashed. <gasps> oh, no. Uh, it was just had bits of mic pack. All of it. And it was fine because it, it survived it. But there was the noise, the feedback that came through the speakers because my mic was in pieces across the stage and <laughs> it meant that all the speakers were going <laughs> I was like oh my god right what have I done so in the middle of a scene whilst just acting through it I was like sticking together the bits of this mic pack the batteries would come flying out or I stick them in stick you back on tape it up put your wire in get it all and th throughout this whole scene I'm just sorting this 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 pack out but oh, that no. was that was I think that was one of my most memorable moment it, and in that show as well particularly one of the most memorable shows it's it's the one show that i remember all of my lines for now i could i, I didn't leave the stage from the beginning to the end i had no breaks at all um so we were hiding water in various props and things just grabbing some water when i could and that's why they hidden in random place <laughs> yeah well, absolutely that's probably why it was um but yeah that that um that show is really and especially that moment, that, that broken mic pack was one of the most memorable moments for me, I think. Just what like about a, you? That oh moment. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that, that moment you go, oh my God, what's, what has happened here? Right, so let's sort this out and act through it. It's all going to be fine. Um, and it was, really wasn't. So yes, tell me about your most memorable, memorable constant Oh, moment. see, my most memorable sort of positive moment. And... I think it was memorable for me personally because it was 
a goal that I wanted ticking off my list. Mm. So one of my most memorable moments was, you know, I always think sort of, I love pantos. I always think sort of like just the colours, the festivities. I always think they're quite memorable shows to do. But I was doing one show and I I quite like doing a bit of improv. I, I, I'm really quite good at sort of if something goes on, just sort of reacting to it and carrying on. And they gave me this one part. I was playing sort of like, it was quite a big sort of, in one of the scenes, like one of the big comedic sort of parts. Mm. And I was playing a fitness instructor, Miss Fit. And we on all the nights like sort of while we were waiting for sort of the ugly sisters to change from the previous sort of scene and come on i just made up like a little routine so i just made up like a really funny comedy routine and like (laughs) the kids loved it so much they all just kept squatting and sort of shouting like you know squat more squat more like the kids just found it hilarious just like this routine doing like the backstage just used to sort of copy this routine I did but I remember on the final night one of the women who was directing the show her husband was in the audience and I have always wanted to just grab somebody so I used to just go out into the audience and sort of you know make them do like a few lunges with me but on this particular night I spotted her husband so I not only got him up I made him go on stage. He was there for about five minutes. And I was just making him just like, prance like a pony, prance like a pony. Kitten hands, kitten hands. I just... <laughs> Brilliant. He was just in the middle of this row. And I was like, oh, I'm missing somebody from my class. And like, I just said his name. But like, I just, you know, because there's, there's so many Stevens. And then I just said his full name and the look on his face was like, oh no. But because he was on there so long, people thought it was a part of the show. They thought he was one of the girls. <laughs> even when they, even when the ugly sisters came on, started doing their scene, he was still there, just like doing aerobics in the background. It was brilliant. I just loved brilliant. it, just because it was. I've always wanted. I love like you know audience interaction. That's why I loved Rocky Horror so much. Yeah. I just loved the participation. And I'd always wanted just to get somebody on stage and just get them doing some random things. And I was like, ah, and people loved it. It was hilarious. I'm so I was, jealous. I was like, I've ticked that off my list now. But yeah, oh, he was a good sport. I'd and feel, I could just yeah. see his wife in the rafters just <laughs> loving it. I'm just trying but to think. My, kind of a, sorry, go, go ahead. No, no, carry on, carry on. I'm just trying to think about if I've ever done anything like that. I'd, in Panto in particular, I, I'm just trying to think. I remember, I think once, I there was somebody on their phone in the front row, and you know, as an actor, how oh. annoying that can be. Especially mm. when it's a, it's a really dark theatre, and there's just one person like, lit up from their phone, like, oh my God. And yeah. I remember, um, I think it was two or three years ago, I, one night, I remember going into the audience just taking it off him. And like making a joke, I managed to get away with it. I was like, right, thank. And I did. I can't remember to life me what I said or what I did. <laughs> okay. I remember somehow at the end of the scene, I, I ended up with this person's phone. And I was like, I hope, I hope you got a round of applause for that from everyone else. <laughs> I don't, I, it was a long time ago. I just cannot remember for the life of me how it how I managed to get it, but I must have made some sort of joke out of it i'm sure i wouldn't have just walked over and just like grabbed it off and just uh, ran off a bit but um but yeah sorry what, what were you gonna say i was gonna say my most memorable awkward moment i mean you know me ben it's very difficult to make me feel awkward and like i said i I'm comfortable with sort of, if things go wrong, just my opinion is if things go wrong, just carry on, just make yeah. it work. So that doesn't make me awkward. But the thing that made me awkward, and you know, the show was memorable for me in itself because when we did like Haunted Cabin, I've only ever done sort of musicals. And I thought, you know what? I want to do an actual play this time. I wanted to do something a bit a bit out of my comfort zone. I've always loved sort of more suspenseful, like serious plays, especially ones where they've got sort of like more macabre themes to them. And I just, it was memorable for me because it was sort of out of my comfort zone and I met like a, you know they were a fantastic bunch oh, of people to work lovely with. lovely cast yeah. so it was 
it was memorable for that because like everyone was just so nice and welcoming and it was just something something very different to what I've normally done and you know what I want to continue doing more plays at some point because I really enjoyed it I never thought that doing plays would be something I'd do but I really enjoyed it I was so glad that I just even though I got lost on the way that was embarrassing <laughs> getting lost to the actual auditions but I made it in the end but the most awkward moment for me that I've ever had was just the night when Daniel's parents came to watch it and it also happened to be the night because in in this like show I had to kiss the male lead and Good. that wasn't awkward until sort of noticing that on one side of the theatre I had Daniel and his parents who they've never he's seen me in shows but his parents have never seen me in shows and I was like great the first thing they're watching me in I'm getting off with another man but also as well the guy's daughter happened to be in the audience and I could just see her giving me daggers and I was just like this is so awkward I've got sort of like them watching sort of a bit awkward on one side and then this child giving me evils <laughs> and I, I even remember my friend at the end and she came up to me and she was like yeah that child did not like you because they were sat in front of her and she was like yeah she was like I heard her going mummy I don't like her and when I kissed her she went that is disgusting <laughs> <laughs> Dying. Oh, I was that's dying. brilliant. It, it, that, I think that is that's one of the most memorable shows. I've, and for me as well, it was my first direction, uh, first time I've ever directed adults. I've directed kids quite a few times. Mm-hmm. I've done um, sh- Shakespeare with kids twice now. I did two shows where I was given a big group of kids and told to put a show on. I, I, um, can't, I can't imagine kids doing Shakespeare. That just... They were weirdly they were really good. The kids that I was given to direct, they were they were all drama students and they were they, they were brilliant at it. Uh, but Horton Cabin was was fantastic uh, in terms of just being able to do diff- something completely as you say something completely different for both of us. I mean, we both joined this new theatre company. The yeah. nicest, the nicest group of people you can possibly wish to work with. All of them were so lovely. To, to just to, and it made you want to look forward to going yeah, to were, going to the doing show week. Yeah, they were all just so very talented bunch of people. They're all just so you know just wonderful. It's always good when you've just got a nice bunch of people for a yeah. show. But yeah, memorable in itself, but awkward for that. Yeah, <laughs> that I mean, I could, I just think on stage kisses, like how many people sort of, I just think so many people, your first one must just be so awkward for you. I, I've never had to do one of those yet. Um, I'm yet to have to, I, I think I had to do an on stage hug was all we were allowed Ooh. to do. Oh, um, wow. When I was at like a school production, not allowed to kiss, can only hug. So that was, that was what I think we had to do. I seem to remember. But um, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, as we've been talking, I've been Googling some of your old pantos. Can you see on your screen? Oh, yes, I can is, see. Is that, is that you there? I found. Yeah, that you is... look so different. <laughs> it's because like, I'm not wearing that glasses. I've, I was going to say. I've got a, you know, a whole ton of makeup slaps on I love my face. I love that. That's great. Uh, we have well and truly talked about all our three questions. Uh, I mean, we, we've nearly filled the entire podcast um <laughs> we have to do a quiz and then we have to see how much time we've got left because um this week it is my turn to quiz lucy oh no now last week lucy you did quiz me and um we thought adam might be returning this week but when but he's not so we thought things were here this week we put your theater knowledge to the test um you already had a look at the title of the quiz and just said you couldn't do it, uh, which I think bodes really well. Um, oh, no. so we, bad <laughs> well, we did this quiz, me and Adam did this quiz, uh, a well, different version of this quiz earlier in, in the season. And it's Can You Guess the Tony Award winning musical from its first second of its cast album? Now, this is a different quiz to the one we've done before, so you can still play along at home if you wish. So, we are going to be playing uh, Lucy. We're playing, playing Lucy. No, we're playing 
the first second of this uh, of each album to Lucy. There are ten, and we're going to see how well you do. Very poorly is what's going to now. Happen. We're going to hope you can hear it, and I'm sure it's going to be very loud. It'll be very loud for us, but um, we'll sort it out in the edit. So don't worry, um, headphone users. The last time we did do this, it was unbelievably loud for everyone listening to it at home, and it um it. I have got some angry comments about that, but um, we thought it for this week, so no one needs to worry. Okay, are you ready? I am as for ready song, as I ever be. For song number one. Now, you don't get multiple choice either of this. I've just got to type it in. So, okay, here we go. Number one. No! It's all you're getting. I mean, I think that's The Lion King. You think it's The Lion King? Yeah. Uh, I would be inclined to agree with you there. So let's see if you're right. Of course you are. Perfect. Well done. So you got one out of ten. That's good really start. good. Good start. start. <laughs> this is the foundation of a high score. I can feel it. Right. Okay. On to number two. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Dare I say it, it sounds a little bit like, I've not seen the show, but I have listened to the um, the track, and mm. I think that might be Dear Evan Hansen. Ooh, no, I, I don't know. I didn't look at this quiz beforehand. I can't spell Hansen. Hansen. Okay. Right, let's see if it is correct. Oh, it's not. Ooh. Oh, it is. <laughs> 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 oh god it is oh, it is <laughs> felt it wrong <laughs> Not, i i yeah i and fan <laughs> oh god okay it you are <laughs> it comes up telling me it's wrong oh that's gonna screw the score system isn't it so oh, you well, did get that right i know me, in my heart oh, i'm right <laughs> it, it tells me it's wrong before i get the answer to come up so it just said wrong and big letters are like you got it wrong and then Got it right. So you got that right, Lucy. Well done. Yeah. That's two out of ten. This is this is might it's might be better than you think. I I've got a feeling. Right. On to number three. Ooh. Ooh. That... Ooh. Oh, that is that's difficult. That's, difficult. that's really hard. Um let's join here again. Yeah, one more time. Oh, was that a car horn at the end? Right. Yeah, it is. It is. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to think of that. It's not In the Heights, is it? Let's have a look. Um, I absolutely love In the Heights. I absolutely love it. It is. Ah! Look at that. Well done. I thought it was Annie for a minute. I was like, oh, Annie's in the city. Annie's got car horns in the in the overture. But no, that's in your heights. Well done. Right, I, you're doing I'm three doing out of well. ten. Smashing it. Right, on to number four. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah. That's Cats. Okay. <sighs> that is, unfortunately. Of course it is. It's from Cats. Yay. Sorry, I just, get, I just don't like it, Cats, anymore. It's a, as I, soon I, as it came on, I just the song was just going through there, my head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the nightmare fuel. Right. On to number five. You're doing so this is hundred percent so far. This is this is gonna be good. Right. Next one. Oh, I know, I know this one. Because I recently listened to this one because I've been following a few podcasts. And this <gasps> you've listened to men- other podcasts other than ours. <laughs> That's not allowed. Not podcasts, but like um, you know, sort of like theatre people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dig yourself out the hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I do listen to like podcasts. Like, I've got nothing better to do with my time now <laughs> than listening to other people. It's quite. I find it's really soothing listening to other people talking to you while you're working. But I've been. This keeps coming up on a lot of sort of like you know theatre YouTube videos and things and I thought you know what I'm gonna because I know the story of it Spring Awakening and it's I think it's a lovely 
a lovely show this one I mean like the you know the plot itself can be a bit like mm, very serious but the music I think is beautiful in it and you got it correct look at this your knowledge of theatre is better than mine and Adam's put together I think I think it's just because I've been I've been trying to educate myself and just listen to so many soundtracks because normally I don't like to listen to the track before seeing the show obviously I've not had that opportunity to go see a lot of shows now so I've just been sort of listening to the tracks while I'm you know just while I'm working just have the music on in the background I need to start doing that I I struggle to listen to the soundtrack because I don't know the plot because I struggle to follow like what's good because sometimes some music like some music was like 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 lame is it's obviously it's all it's just sung all the way through so it's you get the album you get the whole show when you get musicals I've got a lot of dialogue in them uh, I really (laughs) it all feels very disjointed in places so I'm like "Mm." so I normally find that I read the Wikipedia articles because they have a really detailed plot summary same because which is you know which is I think it's kind of bad in a way because now it's just ruined the plot for you yeah also, I kind of think the whole point of musicals is that you can kind of get the story from mm. the song <laughs> I yeah. feel like you're really to. right let's go on to the next one oh there you go yeah. oh Ooh. um it's what? not the only one I can think of is Once, because I remember that, you know, the whole like start of it kicked off with sort of like fiddles playing in an Irish pub. Oh, I The thing with Once is I heard that they do like a mini Irish music concert before the show. So if you get there like half an hour yeah. early, they'll do a, the mu- mu- musicians will come out and do a little concert beforehand. Um, I was meant to see Once this year and I didn't. And I'm really sad. Oh, I got cancelled. No, it is such okay. a... Oh, it's a wonderful show. Oh. We just saw it because we just happened to get um, cheap matinee mm-hmm. tickets. We just sort of did that thing where you get the cheap tickets and rock yeah. up. And I'm so glad we did. Like, because my friends sort of described it. I was like, mm, doesn't sound like what I'd normally go see, but I'll give it a go. And I'm so glad I did because it's just, yeah. it's sad, but it, oh, it's gorgeous. We, we really wanted to go see it. And hopefully in one day we will when we're all back to normality. So let's see if once is correct. Oh, it's not. Oh, um, it, it's, it's Fun Home. Oh, I've not actually seen that before. So, yeah, fair enough. I wanted to I, know. Yeah, that. neither have I. I'm going right. to put that down and have a look at that. Yeah, I don't know anything about that one. That's, that's some Googling it later on today. Okay, <laughs> on to number seven. <laughs> that's helpful. I, I know exactly what this is. I know what it is because my friend has been obsessed with this recently and told me I need to go listen to it. So this was another one that was on my list, Hades Town. Hades Town. How am I spelling that? Hades? No. Like I don't know. Hades Town. Like that. Spell it like that. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's correct. But I, it's more to my spelling is wrong. It's correct, you're spelling less, so... <laughs> Look at how I spell that. <laughs> I mean, like, I was quite uh, up for listening to it anyway, because I've always been a massive fan. Of, I am a Greek mythology nerd. Always loved, like, reading Greek mythology stories. It's really... I find it fascinating mm. of all sort of, like, the, you know, the classic histories. I always think Greek is, like, a really interesting one to delve into. But yeah, I know that because my friend has recommended Hades down to me on so many occasions. Oh, I love it. Right, on to the next one. Again, I know, actually, I've got quite a few of these, actually. (laughs) And I just happen to love this. I've watched sort of like a few of the productions as well, like when they've on TV and things, Hairspray. It of course is. Oh, I love Hasbro. Again, oh, that was the same for me. I um I watched it when they streamed it live. Uh, the show must go on. Streamed it mm. in like, May, and I hadn't seen it before, and I adore it. It's so good. Yeah. Um, it's really it really grew on me because I didn't like it originally. Now I and now I love it. Um, mm-hmm. okay, let's go on to number nine. Oh, know she knows them all. 
I know what this is because my singing teacher recommended this to me and I have watched it a couple of times. It's just such, you know, the music's beautiful. It's just such a nice, just if you know, if you're working, just put the show on and just listen to it in the background. It's such a nice show. It's Sunday in the Park with George. And obviously it's got, you know, the lovely Bernadette. I love her. She is amazing. I do, I do not know this. You don't know it? Oh, no. You need to listen to it. I mean, you're smashing it. I'm really angry. I thought you wouldn't know this quiz. <laughs> I'm I disappointed. I'm so surprised. I've picked a hard one to catch you out and it hasn't worked. It's really backfired. Well, how many are you on now? I think I've got like one wrong so far. And that was the fun home one. But yeah, oh, yeah. Watch it. it's got Bernadette Peters in. She is a babe. Oh, I absolutely love okay. her. Just so, oh, love it. So Brilliant. Good. So you've got... Quite, had Sorry. quite a lot of the cast from Into the Woods in it as well. So if okay. you see, like, the, you know, the filmed version of Into the Woods mm. from the 80s with Bernadette Peters as the witch, you'd probably quite like this as well, because a lot of the cast who are in that are also in this production as well. Okay, I will give it a watch. Right, mm. you are on nine, uh, sorry, eight out of nine so far. This is your very last question. Okay, let's see if you can get Excellent. nine out of ten. I'm ready for it. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh, one more time. Okay, I'm not sure, but purely based on what I went on earlier, because I remember in once there was a lot of obviously the fiddle but there was all there was all a lot of people doing the whole sort of like clapping and going like yeah, yeah cheering in the pub i'm gonna go for once on this one <laughs> it might be, I, if you say once for all of them you're eventually gonna get it right <laughs> i know exactly okay is it once it is yeah. <laughs> look at that well done that was crazy. nine out of ten on your debut quiz that is amazing i am chuffed with that because normally with all like songs i either sort of know the song or who sings it never both unless it's freddie mercury then i will always know <laughs> queen song when i hear it brilliant um well well done you've scored nine out of ten on your very very first quiz that's brilliant um it's gonna it's mess up our score system but <laughs> annoying me you've smashed that um we are gonna run out of time in the podcast this week and i know we've got another section we want we want to talk about so what we'll try and do is we'll put that in for either next week or even going into our last minute christmas special but Sweet. we'll sort that but for now we need to wrap up this week's episode because we have filled an hour already it's just gone oh, like my. that <laughs> And all we've done is <laughs> all we've done is answered three quick questions and done a quiz. When we managed to fill it out, I don't know how good this is going to sound. It might be really boring for everyone to listen to. <laughs> well, at least we had fun. That's we had great. a great time. Well, I'm glad you have as well. And um, we just, I want to plug one more time, and we're going to put all the posts on the social media. Just a reminder that we are still wanting everyone's pantomime stories. We talked about panto again this week, but we want to hear your panto anecdotes, pictures, stories, whatever you've got. Send them in. Drop us a message. Drop us an email. Send us a voice message and we'll drop you in. Come on the podcast. Come and speak to us. Uh, remember that the deadline for all your entries is next uh next saturday saturday the 12th you've got one more week we're going to be spam posting our social medias this week with all the details but please send us an email on courtoffstagepod at gmail.com or a private message or um uh, just, or just get in contact with one of us privately and we would we, we want to hear from you we want this big episode to be a bumper special we haven't had very many yet and we need you to get involved because I know I'm, you've all got a good panto story yeah, so everyone's got a good panto story on. and if we don't have it enough unfortunately the last episode will be really boring and we'll just be sat here on our own talking to ourselves which we don't want I mean you could just dress the drag that might <laughs> get dressed up as a date uh, luckily <laughs> for everybody listening it's a audio only podcast so that <laughs> Uh, but Lucy, thank you ever so much for stepping back in and joining me for another week on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's been great time. to have you. Um, 
hopefully Adam will be back next week. Um, if not, I'm sure you'll be having Lucy again, but hopefully, hopefully Adam <laughs> will be back. And then I ho- hopefully all three of us will be joined together for our season finale for our Panto special. If, if you'd like to come back, Lucy, of course. I will always want to come back, Ben. Oh, brilliant. Just well, seeing your face a good chat through. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and you, it's, it's lovely to be able to speak to you once a week. It's really nice. And Adam, please come back. Not that I, I don't want Lucy to be here, but um, I haven't spoken to Adam in three weeks now. It's been awful. Yes, come back, Adam. Come back, Adam. We need you. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll see Adam, Adam next week. And then we'll see you, Lucy, hopefully, for our season finale. <laughs> I can't believe season one is just almost over. This is the end of episode eight, and we've managed to to make what will be ten episodes. That, that'll be nearly eleven hours of podcast time. That's a great feat. <sighs> it's 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 unbelievable how. And uh, we'll, again, as always, we want to thank all our listeners who listen regularly. Our listeners who get in touch, who send us questions, who drop us emails, who text us all privately to say how much they're enjoying the show. Um, we are our social media in particular, especially our Facebook, are blowing up. They are massive. We've, we we really quickly surpassed 115 likes on Facebook in like a month, and we just it's been amazing. The response we've had. Um, really proud of that. That was it's, a great it's, feat. It's been so um, so brilliant, and we I mean we're regularly getting like 2,000 people looking at our looking at our posts and things. Um, so yeah, we want to say a massive thank you to everybody who is um, listening, watching, sharing, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. Um, but please carry on. We need all your stuff for um, the end of season one, particularly the Panto stuff. And of course, we will still need everything for season two. But details on season two are set to come out in the following few weeks. So stay tuned to our socials and you'll find out all the juicy gossip. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, Lucy, thank you so much again for um, jumping in. It's been great to speak to you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you, hopefully. Everyone out there has enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been (laughs) great. Oh, I'm sure, I hope they have and they're not being too bored by our our stories. (laughs) Um, again, thank you everyone for listening and we'll, uh, me and Adam hopefully will both be back next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Encore Offstage podcast. If you fancy, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encore Offstage Pod. We also have a YouTube channel where we upload a video version of this podcast and that's also at the Encore Offstage podcast. Remember, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a rating or review on your podcast app of choice. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll both be back. The Encore Offstage podcast is produced by Ben Bradley and Adam Guest. It is edited by Jack Spores and Ben Bradley.